Inner tubes are rubbish. I hate them. And I'm gonna tell you why. Inner tubes have been around for almost 100 years now, and although their design has evolved slightly over time, they largely remain the same. So it's about time we all caught up with a new kid on the block, tubeless tires. So in this video, I'm gonna be putting tubeless tires head to head against inner tubes in a grand slam winner takes all showdown and show you why the inner tube is dead to me. Now there's no conspiracy theory here, it's just my honest opinion and you can feel free to agree or disagree and if anything, I'd like to know your thoughts on this and I can already hear you typing away with your sort of questions and concerns over tubeless tyres but fear not because I'm here to help and I've been using tubeless tyres for over five years on the road and almost 15 years off-road. So if you've got any burning questions, get them in the comments section down below. For those of you that are not familiar with a tubeless tyre system, it quite simply removes the need for an inner tube. And whilst your tyres may look very similar, they actually feature a reinforced bead and their internal construction differs slightly too. Tubeless wheels are also slightly different too. They feature a sealed rim bed and the interface where the wheel meets the tyre is also slightly different to create a perfect seal. Whilst the traditional valve would be attached onto the inner tube, in a tubeless system, it's its own individual component which is then attached onto the wheel. And the best thing is you can get them in cool different colours and you can even get aero valves too. For me, one of the best advantages of a tubeless tyre system is the fact that you can run them at a lower pressure, which results in a noticeable increase in the comfort on your bike, as well as still rolling nice and fast. And I actually got in contact with the guys over at Pirelli for some data on this, and they have suggested that switching from an inner tube setup to a tubeless setup could result in savings of between two and three watts, which is a pretty good saving, really. Manufacturers claim them to be faster, independent tests show them to be faster, and having ridden tubeless tires for quite some time myself, they certainly feel faster. But to show you guys at home, I've created an experiment. And I've devised a route that's just over six kilometers long. It features a variety of different road surfaces and some slight gradient changes too, to give us a fair test. I'm gonna complete one run using my standard butyl inner tubes, one run using a super light inner tube, and one run with a tubeless setup. And I'm gonna be using the same bike, the same equipment, the same tire model, and the same width. But I am gonna run each system at its relevant tire pressure to make it a fair test. And I'm also putting a call with a big man to ask for consistent weather conditions too. I've already got a standard set of butyl tubes fitted in my wheels. I just need to check they're at the correct pressure, ready for the first test. Round one, standard tube type tyres and our standard butyl inner tube. Let's go. Run one done. It's been a long time since I've used inner tubes and it'll be interesting to see how they show in the results. Um, let's get our super light inner tubes in. Done. Let's get these on the bike. It does actually feel a little bit lighter as well. Run two, we've got our same tyres, but this time we've got our super light inner tubes. Let's go. Whew, run two complete. It felt fairly similar to be honest, but next up, let's get these babies tubeless. Let's get these on the bike and get back out. And our final run, the one that I've been waiting for, we've got our tubeless Pirelli P0 TLR tires. Let's do this. Oh, 
final run done. I'm not sure if it was any quicker or not, but it certainly felt nicer and it was far more comfortable. And the confidence I had in the corners was greater as well. But let's go check out the results and see what we've got. God, I've got cold hands as well. So the results are in and thankfully the tubeless tyres was the fastest setup because being a big believer in tubeless tyres, I didn't want to prove myself wrong. And in second place comes in with our super light inner tube, which was only seven seconds behind the fastest setup, which I thought it might have been a little bit more than that and I was hoping for a bit more, but they're actually quite close together. And in third place was our standard butyl inner tube, which is no surprise to be honest. It's the cheapest and slowest setup coming in 15 seconds slower than the fastest. But it's not all about speed, because if you're not racing, then the speed is not the most important factor for you. But what is important to consider is the feeling that you get from a certain type of tyre. And by using a tubeless tyre, you can improve the level of comfort on your bike by reducing that road vibration that you can sometimes feel. The level of grip is improved because you can run the tyres at a slightly lower pressure and the tyre is able to deform over the road surface and provide a far greater level of grip. And just the general feeling that you get is far superior than using a tyre and inner tube. And also, by using a tubeless tyre, there's far less chance of getting punctures. And let's face it, no one wants to get a puncture. Do you want more speed? Yeah! Do you want more comfort? Of course you do! Do you want to feel a million dollars? Hell yeah you do! Okay, you get the picture. So my advice, give tubeless a go. And as with all new tech, do your research and take your time and I'm sure everything will be fine. So what if you want to switch to tubeless? Well, most mid-range and upwards bikes include wheels and tyres that are tubeless ready, just they tend to have inner tubes fitted in them for when they're shipped. And it's also often written on the wheels and tyres themselves whether they're tubeless compatible or not. And if you can't see it, then it's worth heading down to your local bike shop because they'll be able to advise you on what's best to do. And if you want to set your tyres up tubeless, well, there's going to be a few little parts that you're going to need. You're going to need some tubeless sealant, a tubeless specific valve which fits onto the depth of your wheels, and obviously you're going to need a tubeless specific tyre if you haven't already got that. Setting up a tubeless tyre is actually a fairly simple process and quite straightforward. But if your wheels and tyres are not listed as tubeless compatible, then just don't try to make them so because you do run the risk of your tyre simply going detached from the wheel and nobody wants that. So is the inner tube dead? For me, yes, but it remains there as a backup should I ever need it. And why not let me know your thoughts on this in the comments section down below. I mean, you might even consider changing to tubeless tyres yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please do give it a big thumbs up and we'll see you next time. So see you later.